Hello and welcome to this endpoint assessment presentation where we're going to have a more in-depth look at what is required for the written report for the level 4 standard. So what is the written report? Alongside your presentation you'll need to submit a written report of 1,500 to 2,000 words prior to your assessment. To summarise the report it will demonstrate how you have acquired the key knowledges, skills and behaviours required to pass endpoint assessment. The report will be based on what you have done during the course of your apprenticeship, stating your roles and responsibilities. This is a reflective account. As I said, it would be between 1,500 words and 2,000 words long. It will include a title page and it should be written in the first person. So what to include? I'll just give a brief overview here about what is required for the written report. So you'll need to give three examples where you solved the technical problem. You'll explain your role and how you selected the appropriate techniques, procedures and methods used, how any findings slash recommendations were made, your role in relation to your employer, any clients or suppliers, and what you did to ensure the safety of people, equipment or data. You'll also need to demonstrate three examples of how you have identified, planned and organised resources. You could explain how you took into consideration cost, quality, safety and environmental impacts. Here you could also make reference to what equipment was used, how any data gathered was analysed and how you initiated the project to produce a desired outcome. And finally, you'll need three examples of how you complied with the SIBSI Code of Conduct, how you kept in touch with developments within your professional area and how you will look to continue your development beyond the apprenticeship. And below is a link to the PDF containing all the information which can be found on our website. So I've covered an overview about what you need to include. I'll now go into a bit more detail about the competencies that you'll need to recover in the report itself. So the document that you'll be assessed against is the apprenticeship standard. Unlike the 10 minute presentation based on your project brief, you must address all the competencies. Before you undertake endpoint assessment, you will have agreed with your employer that you're ready, i.e. you meet all the criteria. So now it's just a matter of evidencing this in your report and subsequent interview, which is informed by the report. So how many KSBs are there? I'll break this down into three sections and we will look at how your core knowledge will be assessed, K1 to K6, how your core skills will be assessed, S1 to S6, and finally, how your core behaviours will be assessed, B1 to B7. So these are further broken down into subsections, as we will see. So to complete the knowledge, skills and behaviours, all the KSBs, you'll need to address all 19 points. Um, because when you attend your interview, the two assessors will be marking you against the KSBs. So I'll stress again that you need to meet all the competencies in this written report. I'm not going to go into detail about every competency in this presentation. I'll pick an example from each of the three sections, the KSBs, and give you a sample as well as what you might be looking to submit. I would strongly recommend, however, that you do read through the guidance document for level four, as I mentioned, where all the competencies are laid out for you. But for a start, let's look at K1, which asks about health and safety, about showing that you understand the principles and responsibilities imposed by the law and other regulations in a building services environment. So, the K1, you could talk about how you work to codes of practice and manage and apply safe systems of work, or how you exercise responsibilities in an ethical manner. Some evidence examples you could use, you may have taken part in quality circles, or discussed your experience of quality assurance processes. Uh, you can show that you understand health and safety policies and practices, or that you understand and operate within the Engineering Council's statement of ethical principles. And here's a sample for K1. This shows that the principles of health and safety are understood and carried out with risk assessments and method statements. You can pause the presentation here for a moment just while you read through the example, and then I'll move on to the core skills. Now, there are six core skill competencies, S1 to S6. 
as you may notice, S1 is actually quite closely tied to K1. So bearing that in mind, I'll take S2 as an example, which is about sustainability, to assess, identify, and record the environmental impact of projects. For this example, you could show how you have undertaken engineering work in a way that contributes to sustainable development. And again, I've included some evidence examples that you could look at. You could have a general understanding of the principles of sustainable development and how these are relevant to your work. You could show how you understand the environmental and social contexts of your work. You could show how you understand and operate within the Engineering Council's statement of ethical principles and also how you take part in short, medium or long term maintenance activities. And here's a sample of a report which covers the S2 competency. As you can see, it talks about sustainability and the environmental impact. Again, I would suggest just pausing at this stage and having a read through before I move on to the core behaviours. Moving on to core behaviours now, there are seven core behaviours in total. Five of them need to be demonstrated in the presentation and all seven need to be demonstrated in the written report and that interview. Here I'll touch on B1, which is about professional judgment and how you are able to demonstrate working within your own level of competence and knowing when to seek advice from others. As with the other core knowledges and skills, more details can be found on our website. So again, this slide details some of the range of things you could include along with some evidence examples. You could show how you are able to work reliably without close supervision, how you have accepted responsibility, managed or applied safe systems of work or contributed to sustainable development. And some evidence examples. You could show how you've worked to a time schedule to meet deadlines or how you have some experience of supervising others to coordinate activities to meet objectives. You could show you have a detailed understanding of safe systems of work, method statements and permit to work systems or how you understand the environmental and social work context of your work, as well as the economic context. And here's a sample of B1 from a report, which shows a level of professional judgment and competence. Again, I would recommend you just pause the presentation right now while you have a read through this one in closer detail. Very briefly now, I'll touch on the interview. This webinar is working under the assumption that interviews are being conducted remotely. You will receive instructions around two weeks after you have submitted your application, which will confirm this. So, on the day of your interview, firstly, just make sure you're well prepared, that everything is working, and that you're in a quiet and comfortable environment. Secondly, you'll need to have an original item of ID ready to present. The interview can't go ahead without this. And thirdly, there will be two trained and experienced SIBSI assessors conducting the assessment. On occasion, there may be an observer present, but they will not be there to assess you. The interview process for Level 4 is the same as for Level 3. You will start with your 10 minute PowerPoint presentation, and this will be followed by a 10 to 15 minute question and answer session. Following this, there will take place a structured interview informed by the knowledge, skills, and behaviours you have focused on in your written report. This will last 30 to 40 minutes. The questions asked in your structured interview will be focused on your written report, so there shouldn't be any surprises. It's all work that you've carried out yourself. So, some final points to summarise. To be successful in your written report, you must have addressed and passed all knowledge, skills and behaviours. Every single competency is equally weighted, so spend time on each one just to make sure they're all addressed. Also, please remember that the content of this report will inform your interview and any area you covered in report could be discussed in further detail at your interview. So be prepared to go into more detail about anything you have mentioned because it might be brought up at the interview stage. And within six weeks of your interview, you'll find out the result. Your official certificate will come from the Education, Skills and Funding Agency, the ESFA. The reason why it takes six weeks is because it goes to a member registration panel who review every assessment, so it will take a little while.
And finally, this is very important, please do review all the documentation relevant to your level of study prior to submitting your presentation and report. And all that's left to say really is good luck. Remember that there are other resources online to help you out and that the membership team can help you out with any general queries and you can contact them by just emailing into the address on this page. Please also visit our website to take a look at our other webinar, which looks at the wider application process for endpoint assessment. I hope you found this presentation helpful and all the best with your application.